Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video um, we're actually doing a reboot of one of our older tutorials of how to make an elf star, uh, which there should be pictures like hmm, right here if you Yvonne knows how to edit. Yeah, so those as well as I'm going to show y'all how to do a five-pointed variation um, that hopefully won't be blurry the whole time. I get the video gets better. Let's keep going. <laughs> to get started off, we're going to be using about six or seven inches of 26 gauge wire. For this ring size, I'm going to be using three eight millimeter beads. These are like a cute, like crackly glass, but you can use any kind of Swarovski crystal, like bicones work well, as long as they're eight millimeter. Um, they kind of work pretty well with this, though you can see here I'm experimenting with some different ring sizes and like numbers of petals on the elf star. And so I'm experimenting with some six and four millimeter, but I don't quite have that figured out yet. But the one that we're making in this tutorial is this elf star, which I think is very pretty and kind of cool. The tools we'll be using are these are tapered step nose pliers bent nose pliers, and wire snips. Links to our comprehensive online toolkit, as well as um, links to the tools and materials used in this video will be down in the um, description. Um, and we're using 18 gauge 3 16 in two different sizes. Let me zoom in just a bit so that we can get hopefully a slightly better view of what's going on. So we're using 18 gauge 3 16 inch in, these are hematite rings, well colored, they're anodized aluminum in the hematite tone from the ringlord.com, and then the bright aluminum from chainmailjoe.com in that 18 gauge 3 16 And then we're using only three rings in the size 16 gauge 1 4 inch, and this is standard wire gauge. I do believe, let me double check. Yes, <laughs> it's standard wire gauge. Uh, and then I have a little veil here that I purchased off of Amazon. There'll be links down below for that as well. Though you could just as easily use another ring or two or um, make your own veil or just whatever. So we're going to begin by whenever you have your rings just out of the bag, they're going to be opened like this where it's a little kind of offset and that's because the rings are stacked into a coil whenever they're made and then cut. I do highly recommend using saw cut rings as opposed to machine cut because you get a much cleaner closure. And we're just going to open our rings up about 45 degrees like that. And to close them, like so we've prepped up here, I had, there were two, four, six open, six closed three open and then six more closed or six more open of the different ring sizes so to close our rings we want to go ahead and wiggle to get that ring closed i realize it's probably blurry but we're going to be doing it quite a few more times so hopefully one of them won't be blurry also you could just be using all of the same ring color as we did in this elf star but it I think it might be helpful in learning to have the contrasting ring colors so I'm going to take this open ring and I'm going to put two closed on it these are our, our small rings and then our large rings so again that will be listed down below in case I become unclear at any point and we're going to close that small ring and now holding on to that, I'm going to hook through with another small through the two and close it. And then let's set it down on the table. And now we're going to pick up this ring here, 18 gauge 3 16 is going to be our center ring. So I'm holding it and I'm going to hook through one, two, three, four. And five six and this is where having the contrasting ring colors really comes in handy because you can just make sure that you're hooking through all the same ring colors and then we're going to close that ring 
if you're working on like let's say this one over here I used a 16 gauge 5 16 inch internal ring and that still isn't quite big enough but um, instead of hooking the center ring through the petals like how we did here um, I attached so I attached the petals so it, we would have just attached those silver rings to that center flower so there's a you can take a million different routes or like honestly like seven maybe um to get to here but that's not important what's important oops is that you get to here so we're going to take one of our large rings and grab we're going to focus on just one of our petals right now so you can see we have our light and our dark rings I'm going to fold our dark rings. I'm going to set that down for just a sec. So I want to butterfly them so that one dark ring goes to each side. And then I'm going to push them down. That way it kind of just falls into the place. And it can be a little fiddly, but you'll get the hang of it. And then I'm going to open that a little bit. If you're familiar with the Byzantine chainmail bead, that's exactly what this is. And so I'm going to hook our large ring through just these two dark rings right there. Let me try to make sure that it focuses. So we're going to close that and if you didn't get it, don't worry, we're going to do it two, twice more at least. And then you can kind of rewind so you can see there how that kind of sets. And so now I'm going to take this small open and I'm going to add one to either side of the large ring that we've added right through where we've already woven. So there's and close. And then I'm going to hook through here and close. So now you can see that gives it a little bit of a tapered effect. It's not just a lonely ring standing out on the edge of our design now. So now we're going to repeat that on the other two petals. So just isolating the set of rings. We're going to butterfly the dark rings and then I'm trying to do this without my hands in the way. So you can actually just grab the back side one and kind of turn it and everything just kind of falls into place. I don't know if that's just muscle memory from years of doing this or if gravity, I don't know, just keep at it and you'll get the hang of it. So we're going to hook this large ring through those two dark small rings and we're going to close it and then we're going to add one small ring onto either side. Now even though this video is a remake of an older video, um, like an older tutorial that I had done, I am still leaving up the older tutorial because I'm hoping that if I explained something in this that I didn't in that, like they'll be companions to each other. So um, that and it was a video from like three years ago and it kind of gets just buried in all the playlists. So that's how it's coming along. And so on our last one, we're going to butterfly them, open them like a book. Which, what I mean by that, is a little bit different than, like, you don't want them both just sitting off like that, or... Then open that up. And I'm really finding it's very helpful to grab this one with my pliers and just rotate it just a bit. I'm actually going to try to get a different camera angle on this weave, like, on this section. Okay, so we butterfly it and grab and turn. That way that inside part that inside part is pointing up. And then we'll open those rings. 
Also, I've just painted my fingernails and bumped the tripod, uh, so please forgive my super pro quality manicure, because you know that's important. <laughs> so we've hooked through those two small dark rings. And whoop. Sorry, I'm working at an awkward angle around the tripod. So wiggle that ring closed. Pet it. Sometimes there'll be a little bit of a burr on your rings. And you can just kind of rub that right off with your pliers. And now I'm going to come through between the large ring and this ring here and hook through just those two dark rings. You don't want it to be hooked through like that. Like, do you kind of see how that... We want it to be just through those two. So let's close that. And then do it again on the other side. Just through those two small dark and then close. And now we can lay this down and kind of fiddle with it. And you can see that it, it will kind of hold its shape, but it's really going to help it to have those beads there. So to do this, we have about seven inches, six or seven inches of our 26 gauge. This is silver plated silver by Parawire. I really like it because it holds up very well. It's not going to tarnish or turn your skin green. And I'm giving it just a bit of a fold. And I'm going to thread on one of our eight millimeter beads. And let that fall to the center. Doesn't have to be dead, you know, dead center, but it didn't hurt. <laughs> and now I'm going to use the wire like a needle and hook through one, two, wait, one, two, three, four, and five. So all five, I'm hooking through this one, the three, and then that one. Or threading through, rather. And I'm going to do that on one side. And before I let it slide down all the way, I'm going to go ahead and do it on the other side. Because it's just a little easier. I want to avoid getting as many kinks in the wire as possible. Or try to get it as few kinks, I guess, as possible. And so we've just pulled that down over it. You can see that bead is keeping those rings kind of equidistant. That's not the best closure I've ever seen. So I'm going to fix it. Yeah, doesn't matter how long you've been weaving chainmail. Don't ever be too proud to go back and touch up your own work. So close it and then pet it and make sure it's good. <laughs> and now... Threading... Let me zoom out, actually. There we go. So just threading the bead on. And I'm going to go ahead and do it on both sides. Though so you could just do one at a time. Just because this is the way that I'm doing it. Just one way of doing it, y'all. Try what works for you. And so now I'm actually bending around in the middle of the wire that we're working with. And pushing it through just a bit. And I want to try to, you know, well, that, that's a little bit more advanced. You can try to go ahead and thread it through your other bead if you want, but that is not uh, essential. So we'll pull that one back down where it goes. These crackly beads do not have the smoothest internal, like, section there. So if you hear, like, weird crackling, uh, that's just the beads. So I've bring, brought this bead back down just as snug as it'll go to where it needs to be whenever it's all said and done. And then I'm going to grab our wire that we've thread through these five rings and this bead. And pull. And you can see that pair of wire held up fantastically. Ooh, don't mean to keep bumping the tripod. And so now from here... You can see there's a little bit more wire on this side than on that one. Well, I don't really like it. It's not the end of the world. But I'm going to just bring this around. And 
I'm actually going to feed, yeah, this wire through the five, kind of following where the wire before it has already traveled. And that can be kind of difficult with the ring or with the bead in there, so you can actually just grab it and wiggle it out just a bit just to make room to be able to fit what you're doing through. Okay, so now we want to keep this from kinking up. So I'm just going to grab and using my fingernail to try to guide that wire to keep it from kinking. And pull tight. And now we'll pull tight on the other side as well. And one last step. So I'm bringing it back up and we're feeding this back down and through our bead. So again, I'm putting my finger in there to keep this loop from kinking. And so, and I'm just grabbing and tugging. I very much prefer to use my pliers for this than just my hands because uh, my knuckles start to get kind of sore, especially in my thumbs. So we're pulling nice and tight. And now I'm going to come through and do at least three stitches. So I'm bringing that wire through in right there. And I'm going to grab and pull. And then bring it around. And this is just binding off our wire. Bring it around and pulling. And then bringing it around. Feeding it through grab and pull, bring it around, feed it through, grab and pull. And you can see that kind of nods that off a little bit. So now I'm just going to come in and snip off that excess. And now we're going to do that same thing. Oh, there's quite a bit over here. If you start to get really floppy, don't worry. Uh, if it gets all floppy and weird, we can fix it. <laughs> so we're just going to do that one stitch. Whoops, two stitch. Just my plier slipping. <laughs> and three stitch. And... Four stitch. So now snip. we can squish that down on both sides just to make sure there's no little pokey bits and we're gonna take the tips of our flat nose pliers and I'm just gonna press like getting in right there I'm just pressing so I think this side will demonstrate a little better I'm gonna press right up against there just push that on in. Sound effects are always helpful. <laughs> and you can do that as well down here on this bead. Just press and press. You could, uh, I'm using 26 gauge wire for uh, wrapping on this, but you could also use a 24, maybe even a 22 gauge. The thicker it gets, the more run risk you're going to run of kinking. Um, though a 28 gauge, I don't think you could be quite so hard on. So experiment around with what you have. Fortunately, it doesn't take much wire and see what works for you. So now uh, the kind of top loop, if this bead is the bottom, this one would be the top. I've opened it and I'm just going to thread our bail on like that and then get in here and close it. Now you could have just as easily attached an ear hook or attach a couple of these in line um, to be like... A really cute necklace design is if you use crystal points and attach your, um, some chain here and here and then instead of having a bail you could have like a little charm or a wrapped crystal or a teardrop bead and I think that's just a beautiful necklace uh, design idea so especially if you use some larger rings um, just, I don't know, the possibilities with this really are endless, so I'm excited to see what y'all do with it. Hey y'all, Future Vaughn here. Um, 
To do the five pointed star pattern like how we have here, um, this one I made using 16 gauge, that's standard wire gauge, in a 3 8 inch size um, for the center ring. Everything else is the same as what you would use for the uh, three, you like the three little thingies, um, except for that center ring size. So uh, you could use an even larger ring size if you wanted to be able, I mean, you could make this just as large as you want. And then also I went through and used five millimeter um, rainbow moonstone beads because the six millimeter made it a little too tight and the four millimeter was a little too baggy. So I could continue using the six millimeter if I uh, went up a ring size in the center, probably to um, just a straight up half inch would would probably do the trick. So yeah, that's how to do that. Hey guys, thanks so much for hanging out with us during this tutorial. I really hope that it was helpful to you. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave those down below. Um, in the video description, there are links to all the different tools and materials that we've used, as well as links to our curated toolkit over on our website. Um, also, our social media, our Patreon, which is a great way to support our channel if you've if you like what we're doing and you want to, you know, like, share, subscribe, all that. Um, <laughs> but also if you'd like to see our behind the scenes content, get sneak peek previews of some of our videos, have your work featured in our videos, um, get early access to our auctions and also our Saturday patron exclusive live streams. And that's all just for a dollar, you guys. Like, <laughs> the more you pledge, the more you get, though. Um, we also have craft along kits and different things. So there's a lot of cool stuff going on over there. We also post quite a few things that are just free as well, um, but exclusive to Patreon that you wouldn't see over on our Instagram and Facebook and stuff. So uh, yeah, I think that's it. So um, until next time, y'all, happy crafting. Bye. <laughs>